Hey, it's Chris Nichols. Welcome back, my fellow petographers. That works, petographers. Uh, today we got a fun video for you because we got the brand new Sigma 14 millimeter f1.4 DGDN art. Hey, Jordan, you ever hate when you have to send clients photos and then wait for their feedback, get an email back to you? This is a big pain. It just sounds like me trying to get feedback from you on our YouTube show. Yeah, and you hate that, right? Yes. So Yeah, so there's a software pick flow now. So I can create client galleries, even upload full RAWs that they can see, and then they can make selections, they can comment, they can make annotations, and they can decide on retouches or edits they'd like to see happen. I can even include my retouchers and editors so they have full access to those files and comments right away. Big thanks to PicFlow for sponsoring this video. And if this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description below and get it today. Now we're out here today in beautiful Kananaskis country and you can see, look at those gorgeous colors in the background. We've got a nice sunset going on because we're out at night hoping to do some astrophotography because that's exactly the first thing we think about when we see this brand new lens. Of course, we're gonna do some other tests as well, but you know, it's a little hazy. We've got a lot of forest fires up north and we're getting a lot of smoke and we got some cloud cover. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. Okay, so let's talk about handling on this art lens first. And just for context and scale, I've got it on the Sony a7R5 tonight. So you can see, this is a pretty hefty lens. I mean, it's a big lens physically. 1170 grams or like just over half an oct. You know, large front element, fixed flower shaped hood. But like all art lenses, it feels beautiful. It's built really nicely. We've got nice rings and construction here. Lots of control. So first off, of course, autofocus, manual focus selector. I do also have a customizable button on this side. And then this is really interesting. I'm gonna look forward to using this tonight. You've got a switch here where you can then actually lock the lens at that focus point. So for example, tonight I'm gonna to focus at infinity, try to get those stars sharply in focus. And then I can click that and then even if I bump lenses in the dark, you know, bump the rings, turn it by accident, I'm not gonna mess up my focus. That's a really smart feature. Now my aperture ring here goes from f1.4 to f16. It can also then go into auto aperture and I can control it from the camera. I can click a lock to keep it from ever going into the auto setting if I want or to lock it exclusively in the auto setting, that's nice. And I can also de-click the aperture ring. So if I want something silent and smooth for video work, I have that as well. The other thing that I wanna point out that's really nice, we do have a lens color here. It's absolutely removable, but Considering the size of this lens, I like it just to keep the balance point a little bit more forward on a tripod. But the other beautiful thing is it actually is cut for Arca Swiss dovetail for tripods. We complain about this on so many lenses where they fail to do this. So I'm really happy to see it here. Okay, so I'm down here testing the minimum focusing distance and I'm actually shooting these two rocks. These are in focus at this distance. I'm about nine inches away from the sensor, roughly about 0.3 meters for close up. But you can see my working distance is like, you know, touching the hood basically. So you can do some pretty neat wide angle perspective macros here with this lens. It is still very wide. I'm still getting the trees way off on the horizon, but pretty cool feature. Okay, so I wanna talk about flare and sun stars next, but I kinda of wanna do it while we have a little bit of light. It just wouldn't make sense in the pitch black talking about this stuff. So. Shooting this against the sun and bright light sources, first off, like pretty much all Sigma art lenses, the coatings are fantastic. Minimum loss of contrast shooting towards the sun. Uh, we're getting basically no ghosting, even when stopping down the lens. No flare, you know, it's really, really good that way. Now, when it came to testing sun stars, honestly, Sigmas usually make pretty poor sun stars. I mean, average at best, I wasn't expecting much. So when I tested them on the 14 mil, I was actually really impressed. They're quite beautiful, as you can see, are quite distinct clean looking, lots of points to the stars, very sharp, well-defined points to the stars. So if your landscape photographer likes to shoot, you know, bright city lights, or you wanna shoot with the sun in the frame a lot, this lens can handle it beautifully. Now you may not think that autofocus is such a big deal on such a wide angle lens, especially for a lot of landscape work, but I could also see using this for interesting street photos, certainly things like skateboarding and other extreme sports, in which case if you're really close, you want this thing to focus quick. Now you can see here with our example, it focuses very fast from very close to infinity. It is snappy back and forth, back and forth without delay or hesitation. And that's thanks to the very strong linear motor inside this lens. All right, so yes, I'm shooting a puddle here. 
Normally I would want a polarizing filter here just to get rid of some of the glare of the clouds in the sky, but actually I really like the colors in the sky right now, so I'm happy. But if you ever do want to use filters on this lens, of course it's gonna be a pain. There's no way to put filters on the front without some sort of special adapter that would have to be made to hold larger plate filters in front. You do have a cutout in the back and actually it's got the nice locking switch. So you know, there's a template, you can cut out gel filters, but I mean, I always find that clunky at best. But for astrophotography, I don't need any right now, so we're good. Okay, so I'm being lit up by car headlights now because it's blue hour, we're just about to lose all our daylight. Um, let's talk about sharpness while we still have the opportunity. So first off, testing this, looking at the center wide open at 1.4, very pleased with the sharpness. Actually pretty decent contrast. When I stop down to f2.8 in the center, I do notice that the contrast improves just a little bit, but Detail wise, very similar, so very impressive. The corners as well, focusing specifically in the upper left corner here at f1.4, again, low contrast, but actually pretty good detail. Not as good as the centers, but stopping down even just to f2.8 sharpens those up really nicely. So overall, this lens is very sharp across the board and I'm excited to see what I can do with it tonight. Okay, let's talk about bokeh on the Sigma 14mm 1.4 art. So first off, specular highlights in the corner of the frame, minimal cat's eye, even shooting wide open at 1.4. Stop down the lens a little bit and that largely goes away. So that's really nice to see. The specular highlights themselves, very clean. I'm not seeing any onion rings. However, we do have a fairly strong soap bubble effect where we get this sort of halo around our specular highlights. Now, this is not exactly the kind of lens that you would call a shallow depth of field lens. You gotta get fairly close to things and shoot wide open to really get soft backgrounds. But in situations where I do have that, I would say, the transition looks a little bit harsh. You know, the backgrounds could be a little energetic looking. Again, if I'm shooting a landscape situation where I'm stopping the lens down a bit, that's gonna be a non-issue. So as usual, the astrophotography gods do not shine upon Jordan and I. I don't know what we did as far as karma goes, but we've got a, a half moon, but it's a bright half moon, but we're getting wispy clouds now. They're really obscuring a lot of the stars. So it's just not gonna work for us tonight too bad, but we did get enough samples that we can at least make some uh, conclusions from. And when you see us again, we will finalize our thoughts on this Sigma 14 mil art. Well, welcome back. We've uh, had a chance to look at our samples. I can make some conclusions here on the Sigma 14 millimeter 1.4. So actually for astrophotography, I think this is a great lens. I mean, I didn't see any coma in the corners. There is a little bit of sagittal astigmatism, you know, where your stars on the edges kind of spread out longitudinally, look like little wings. You know, honestly, on a 60 megapixel sensor, if you're pixel peeping, you can see it, but at a proper viewing distance, it's really not a big deal. So I think it actually handled that quite well. I did also want to mention aberrations. Now, first off, we did have some chromatic aberration, but it's very easy to get rid of in post. Luckily, we don't have really any loca problems, longitudinal chromatic aberration, where you get big color fringing and out of focus areas, foreground and background. That would typically be an issue with 1.4 lenses, but Sigma's corrected that very well. So should you get this lens? Well, first off, let's make it easy. If you're looking at L mount, yes, absolutely. This would be an awesome ultra wide astrophotography lens. But what about Sony E mount? Then you're obviously gonna compare this against the 14 millimeter F1.8 from Sony, which is also a fantastic lens. And when you look at the price point, they're basically the same. So which way do you go? Well, the Sigma does give you the advantage of brighter lens, 1.4. And for astrophotography, I think that's absolutely worth it. But it is definitely larger and heavier. So if you want, to absolutely use this strictly for astrophotography, I think the Sigma is a great way to go. Now, if you want a lens that's more compact, easier to fit in a camera bag, better to travel with, for example, and you don't mind the slightly slower aperture, I think the Sony is still a great way to go. But hopefully this video helps you decide which one would be better for you. Regardless what lens mount you're looking at, Sigma's made a very compelling ultra-wide prime lens here worth taking a look at. Oh, I'm also really excited to say that our podcast was just released a day before the release of this video, so you can listen to it on all of your favorite podcasting apps, or you can watch us on YouTube here. I mean, if you're following and subscribing, you're already gonna see those, so please check those out. Otherwise, check out Instagram and Twitter. We'd appreciate that. And we'll We'll see you soon with more episodes on Petapixel.